When he was just 13 years old, Garland Johnson was diagnosed with glaucoma. Since then, he has been coming to the Wilmer Eye Institute at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore for treatment. Four years ago, I thought that right now I would be just about totally blind, but coming here to Wilmer Eye Clinic and Dr. Quigley and Dr. Kahn to help, they have saved my vision as much as possible, I do believe. And it just given me the opportunity to see my kids grow up. Wilmer is one of the leading eye clinics in the United States and was one of the first to combine patient care with teaching and research. Johns Hopkins back at the end of the 19th century began a completely different way of training people, which involved uh, from the very beginning uh, an apprenticeship approach to medicine where you actually had contact with patients from the very beginning and learned the practical skills of being a doctor from people who were uh, more senior in the field. One of Garland's doctors is Nathan Congdon. As a resident, he studied under Dr. Richard Green, a pathologist who's been a professor of ophthalmology at Wilmer since 1989. His work is usually behind the scenes, but is crucial to the training of other doctors. The average patient doesn't encounter a pathologist. Uh, they may not be as aware of the critical role of uh, people like that in the, uh, uh, in the, the medical edifice. Uh, pathologists uh, are the, the court of final resource. They're the ones who tell us, finally, what the disease really is. Dr. Green is a man of few words and is dedicated to teaching other doctors about the field of ophthalmology. Most students learn the, the best when they dig it out themselves. You can stimulate and you can get them started, but the most effective teaching is uh, really uh, the teaching oneself. Dr. Green uh, plays an incredibly important function in training and giving people the roadmap that they'll use throughout the rest of their careers to orient their way around the eye. Wilmer director Dr. Morton Goldberg understands the value of Dr. Green's work. He's perhaps the most important contributor of new ideas in this field of the entire 20th century now going into the 21st century. But the economics of delivery of care nowadays makes it very, very difficult to identify funding for such people. After all, they are not operating on patients. They are not generating revenues. Funding for work like Dr. Green's is always a challenge. The Wilmer is fortunate because since 1957, the Oddfellow and Rebecca World Eye Bank and Visual Research Foundation has provided financial assistance to the Institute. People come to a place like, uh, like Johns Hopkins and like Wilmer, and uh, they may uh, go away at the end of the day feeling, oh, I encountered a, a terrific ophthalmologist, or I, I had this wonderful experience with an internist, but they're not aware that they may also have had uh, an incredible uh, encounter with a pathologist as well, and that uh, the work of that person behind the scenes may have been as important or more important uh, to their diagnosis and treatment. It's uh, quite similar to the way that the uh, Odd Fellows and Rebecca's uh, have worked as well, uh, working behind the scenes uh, to fund important work. Uh, patients may not be aware uh, when they come here of the uh, work of the people who are uh, funding and helping to uh, uh, to keep Wilmer going. <coughs> On behalf of the uh, Odd Fellows and uh, Rebecca's Visual Research Foundation, and most specifically the great state of Tennessee, it is my pleasure to give you this check in the amount of $50,000 for research. Arthur Craig is the director of the Oddfellow and Rebecca's Visual Research Foundation. The Oddfellows and Rebecca's have always been willing to support charitable and uh, uh, functions uh, of, such as the Wilmer Institute and the Visual Research. Uh, they don't look for recognition. They look for the end result only and the helping of people uh, around them. The financial support of the Odd Fellows and Rebecca's is an important factor in keeping Wilmer a leading facility. The funding from the Odd Fellows and the Rebecca's makes it possible for me as director of the Wilmer Eye Institute to keep Dr. Green's program viable and successful and through his discoveries published in over 700 instances in the medical and scientific literature, we make it, that makes it possible for us to educate eye doctors and pathologists throughout the world. But after almost half a century, this support from Oddfellows and Rebecca's may no longer be assured. 
The future, of course, is something that none of us know. Our membership is decreasing, and uh, with the decreasing membership, we have a decrease in financial support from the Odd Fellows and Rebecca's. Well, the quality of uh, education will suffer, and eventually the quality of uh, understanding of eye diseases will suffer, and eventually, yet, the quality of patient care will suffer. I don't consider it a hospital or a clinic. I'm more considerate my home week and home because I look at Dr. Condon, Dr. Quigley as a second father because they gave me a chance of some things that I don't think I've had not come here, I would be able to do. The research and professorship program at the Wilmer Eye Institute is just one of many programs and charities that Oddfellows and Rebecca's support. 